Many of us are familiar with the term Hasidut. We know Hasidim, we maybe davened in a Hasidic minion. But when did we stop and look at this whole magnificent and rich world of Hasidut? Here in the Israel Museum, there's an opportunity to do so. As we see here, a special and unique entire exhibition dedicated to the world of Hasidut. The first room is about the history from where the Hasidim come and especially the Baal Shem Tov who is actually the founder of Hasidism in the Ukraine and, um, and it, that was less than 300 years ago and in that room we have photographs uh, but we have also some objects like for instance the prayer shawl, the talit of the Baal Shem Tov and we have this wonderful chair here which belonged, not that one, this is a replica, but it's exactly like the original which belonged to Reb Nachman of Breslav. The second room is about customs, customs practiced by Hasidim, usually Jewish customs in general, only in their Hasidic style. It's all photographs and it's uh, the photo photographers are uh, famous photographers and therefore they're not only the, the uh, customs are interesting but also the quality of the photographs is important. And here we have, for instance, a picture of, uh, photographed by Menachem Kahane as a Hasid on Lag Baomer is shooting against well, Yetzahara, which means the evil, the evil inclination. And here we have a wonderful photograph by Yuval Nadel, which shows the, all the Hasidim looking for the best etrog uh, uh, on, before Sukkot. And you can see the various courts at the various hats they're wearing. We have uh, the life cycle divided into children, women, men and rabbis. Each, each room has a wall with the typical garments. Here we are in the children's room and uh, we have here toys. And with the toys, if you have a look at the, at the pictures of the rabbis, Hasidic rabbis of course, uh, these pictures are put into the baby pram from very early on so that the little baby from early on understands who are the important personalities and ideally copies them later on in life. We are in the women's room here and like with the other rooms we have a wall with clothing and with women we differentiate between court and court according to the head cover and there are women who wear wigs and there are other courts which don't allow wigs and there are for instance differences like you put a, a scarf uh, uh, on, on, the, on the head but, but some have even a black scarf on the shaven head which is sort of the most extreme in Sneot. Uh, we have a film in this room which shows the mitzvah tensel, which is uh, something which only Hasidim do. Uh, lately I heard, by the way, that the Litvish start to copy it because they like it so much, but it's originally a Hasidic custom. The third room is the room of the men. And with the men, of course, it's a very impo important obligation the men have is to pray. And we have a film which shows various types of prayers. Uh, we also have a film where we see, for the first time, this is filmed, how a streimel is made. And if we look at the wall behind us, we see the various streimelen. And we see also, for instance, there is a different kind, which is a spodic, which looks differently, which is uh, worn by Polish uh, Hasiduyot. Uh, and we see two different kinds of in, in uh, uh, very much, uh, you know, to make two groups, but there are of course many more groups. The one group is the, where they wear the costume from Eastern Europe, you know, the Beckish or Capote, the, the black coat here. And on the other side we have the costume which was adopted by the Hasidim. It was, it is told that the first uh, Lelova uh, Hasid who came here in the middle of the 19th century that he adopted the local Ottoman costume because he said that actually it is very much so, probably so that Avram Avino and Moshe Rabbeinu that they were actually an oriental costume not an Eastern European costume and this costume was taken away from us uh, from, from other groups but we have to take it back so he introduced this costume into the Jerusalemite uh, Hasidic circles. This uh, room is, belongs to the world of the Rebbe and the Hasidim uh, 
they adore their Rebbe, I must say. They are really, uh, the, the Rebbe has a position which I think no rabbi in any other community has, in that he is at the same time a, a communicator, a medium between his Hasidim and, and, um, and God. And he is also asked for every problem and every question in life, one goes first to the Rebbe. And one believes firmly that the Rebbe can help. And now here we have objects, uh, the clothing, which is of course more festive and more special with the Rebbe. So how are the reactions of the Sidim who actually come and see how their life looks from the view of a curator? Mm -hmm. Well, till now I must say that I'm very happy that they receive it very well and they're actually really uh, very pleased with it because usually the, uh, the uh, people who don't be belong to Hasidic courts, they don't have much uh, occasion and they don't have a chance to enter these, uh, these groups. And, uh, and therefore they know very little about them. And if you ask, I ask people, for instance, who, when I have a group, I always ask them, who has really met Hasidim or who has been in a Hasidic home? And most of the people just haven't. And I want to, a little bit to, you know, to make the effort to bring people closer to each other. And uh, I think that everybody who has a sincere interest and who really wants to know them and comes with an open mind and an open heart, it's really not that difficult. <laughs>